Hello guys, today's video is on negative exponents. So, negative exponents can be rewritten using a positive exponent using the following rule. So, for example, if you have x to the negative a power, you can flip it over and write it as x, 1 over x to the positive a power. So at all times, you want to make sure that you change everything that's negative to a positive exponent. So for our first example here, we have x to the negative fifth power, and it says write each expression using positive exponents. So I'm literally going to rewrite this 1 over x, and the 5 becomes positive. That's your answer, 1 over x to the positive fifth answer. For this next one on number 2, it says 3m to the negative second power. So the three is positive. That's that coefficient that we've been talking about. Um, that's not gonna flip to the denominator. The only thing that flips is the exponent. So with the variable that it's attached to. So this m to the negative second will flip to the bottom and become three over m squared. All right, let's try number three. So same thing with number three. This negative 7 doesn't flip. The only thing that flips down is something that has a negative exponent attached to it. So in this case, it's, we have a to the negative fourth and b cubed. Well, b cubed is positive, right? b to the third power. So the only thing I'm going to flip is a to the negative fourth will become a to the positive 4, and we'll flip it down into the denominator. So again, you only move what is negative. All right, this next part says, simplify each expression. Make sure the final answers contain only positive exponents. Hint, use the rules, then move the variables at the end. So we have w to the seventh power times w to the negative ninth power. So let's think about what we're doing here. We have multiplication here. So remember when we have multiplication, we add our exponents. So first perform the rule. So 7 plus negative 9 is negative 2. So I have a w to the power of negative 2. So remember to make that positive, I just flip it down to the bottom. So it becomes 1 over w to a positive 2. All right, let's try number 5. Okay, so we have multiplication again, right? We have 4c to the 8th power, d to the negative 3rd power, times 5c to the negative fifth power d to the negative first power. So remember, we actually really multiply our numbers. So 4 times 5 makes 20. And then we're going to add our exponents that have the same base. So they both have that base of c. And then 8 plus negative 5 is 3. So that turns into c cubed. And then lastly, we have a d to the negative third power and a d to the negative first power. So negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. So I have a d to the negative fourth power. So I performed my rule. Now, the last thing to do to clean it up would be to move our negative exponent, which is just this d to the negative fourth, move that into our denominator, and it becomes positive. So your answer would be 20c cubed all over d to the fourth power. All right, go ahead and try number six on your own. So you're doing 6x to the negative eighth times negative 3x to the negative third power. So you are multiplying. Multiply your, whoopsie daisies, multiply your coefficients and then add your exponents. If you have anything that's negative, flip it down to the bottom. All right, let's try number seven. So we have an a to the negative fifth and an a to the seventh, and they're being multiplied, so we add. So negative five plus seven is two. So we have a squared. Then we have b to the eighth and b to the negative third. So b to the eighth plus negative three is five. We'll do some work over here. 
So that would make b to the fifth. Lastly, we have a c to the negative 12th and a c to the 7th. So negative 12 plus 7 is negative 5. So we have a c to the negative 5th. Once you've done the rule, reevaluate. Do you have a negative exponent anywhere? And you do right here. So we flip that one, and it goes down to the bottom. Everything else stays on top. So a to the second power, b to the fifth, all over c to the fifth would be your answer. All right, for number eight. So we have eight p to the fifth power all to the negative second power. So this is an example of that power to a power. So we're no longer multiplying. We have a power raised to another power. So remember, we have to take this power to both things. So we're going to do 8 to the negative second power, and we're also going to do p to the fifth to that negative second power. So in a calculator, type parenthesis 8, close your parenthesis, and then caret button negative 2. You should get a fraction, so hit math, enter, enter, and you should get 1 over 64. So that's just this piece here. Okay, so now for this other part. When you have a power to a power, we multiply our exponents. Okay, you guys are just going to have to memorize these rules. So we're going to multiply. So 5 times negative 2 makes a p to the negative 10th. All right, so we perform the rule. Now we just have to simplify it by getting rid of our negative exponent. So we have a negative exponent here. So this is going to flip into the bottom, into the denominator, and it becomes positive. So 1 over 64 p to the 10th power is your answer. All right, so let's do, or I'm going to have you guys try number 9. So same thing here, do the power rule. Do five to the negative third power, and then you have to do y squared to the negative third power. When you have a power raised to a power, you multiply your exponents. For this piece, you will really put that in your calculator, being sure to always use parentheses. All right, let's try number three. So it says, or sorry, 10. It says 3rs raised to the negative third power all to the negative fourth power. So we don't have multiplication again. We have something being raised to a power of negative four. So I'm going to have to distribute that power or exponent of negative four through to everything. So we'll do three to the negative fourth power, r to the negative fourth power, and we'll do s to the negative third power raised to the negative fourth power. So it goes to everything. So in your calculator, do parenthesis three, close your parenthesis, caret negative four, and you should get one over 81. Then of course, r to the first power, one times negative four is just negative four. So you have r to the negative fourth power, and then we're gonna have s, we have a negative 3 times a negative 4, which makes a positive 12. So this is essentially your answer, but they don't want us to have any negatives left in our answer. So we just have to move this one, the r to the negative fourth, put it in the denominator so that it can become positive. So we rewrite this. We could say 1 over 81, r to the fourth power, s to the 12th. Another thing we could do is technically this is over one, so s to the 12th is on top, right? It's in the numerator essentially. I'm just combining this to make one fraction, and that would be your answer. So s to the 12th, all over 81 to the r to the fourth power. And that is your answer to number 10. All right, go ahead and try number 11 on your own. So go ahead and distribute your negative 2, 6 to the negative second power, x to the fifth raised to the negative second power, y to the negative fourth raised to the ne negative second power, k 
keeping in mind a power raised to another power means to multiply. So multiply your exponents. Remember, do not leave a negative in your answer. All right, so remember with this one, we have h to the second power all over h to the fifth power. So we're dividing. So remember when you divide, when we divide, we actually subtract our exponents, right? So we're gonna have to do two minus five. So two minus five is negative three. So this is h to the negative third power. We just have to rewrite it though to make it so we do not have a negative exponent. So to do that, we'll have one over h to the positive three. So just put it in a denominator and it will make it positive. All right, for number 13, let's do the same thing. So we have a c to the negative second power Divide it by c to the seventh power. So I have to do negative two minus seven, which is negative nine. So that'll become c to the negative ninth power. When I divide d to the negative first, divide it by d to the negative second, I have to do negative one minus negative two. Remember, this is like a positive, so negative one plus two is one. So I have a d to the first power, or just d. So now to rewrite this, my d is positive, so that'll stay in the numerator. My negative 9 is, um, it's negative, so that's going to go in the denominator, and it will become c to the ninth power down there. It will become positive. All right, for number 14, remember when you actually have numbers out front, the, these coefficients, you actually truly divide them. So 14 divided by 7 is 2. Then I have a w to the fourth and I'm dividing w to the negative second. So I have to do four minus negative two, which is six. So I get two w to the positive six power. Everything's positive, so it'll stay just like that as our answer. All right, go ahead and try number 15 on your own. So first divide your coefficients and then subtract the exponents on your variables. Remember, if anything is negative, flip it and put it in the denominator and it will become positive. Alrighty. So same kind of thing here on 16. It says 36 X to the negative fourth Y to the eighth all over 12 Y to the seventh. So we're gonna do 36 divided by 12. And when we do that, we get three. Then remember, I look for the same variable on top and bottom and I would subtract those exponents, but there isn't an X on the bottom. So that's just gonna say X to the negative fourth. Then I have a y to the eighth on top and a y to the seventh on bottom. So I have eight y's on top and seven y's on bottom. So when we cancel them out from top to bottom, you're left with one y on top. So we're not allowed to leave that negative exponent. So we'll leave three y on top because those are both positive but the x to the negative four will come down to the denominator and become positive. So that is your answer to number 16. All right, go ahead and try number 17 on your own. So you are gonna get a fraction here, but make sure you use your calculator when you do 15 divided by 18, and then hit math, enter, enter. All right, for number 18, I am going to divide my coefficient. So I'm gonna do negative four divided by eight in my calculator. And then I hit math, enter, enter, and I get one half. All right, so then if I look at my exponents here, I have a p to the first power 
and a p to the second power. So one minus two is negative one. So I have a p to the negative first power. Then I have a q to the fifth power and a q to the second power. I'm dividing, so I subtract. Five minus two is three, so I get q to the third power. Then I have r to the third and r to the tenth. Again, I'm dividing, so I subtract my exponents. 3 minus 10 is negative 7, so I'm left with an r to the negative 7th power. So I just have to rewrite this. Anything that's negative is going to drop down in the denominator. My q to the third power is positive, so that will stay in the numerator, but my p to the first power will drop because it's negative, and my r to the negative 7th power will drop, but it will become r to the positive 7th power. All right, so you go ahead and try number 19 on your own now. Again, remember to actually divide your coefficient and subtract your exponents. All right, next we're actually going to jump down and do number 22. So this is actually in the mixed review part um, because this is old stuff. So think about what rules we have here in 22 or like what's really happening. So in our numerator, we have 6a cubed times 5a to the ninth power. And then we also have division, right? So you're going to need to use the product rule first because of the multiplication. And then we'll use the quotient rule because of that division bar there. Okay, so we are going to do the product rule first. So I'm going to have to do 6 times 5, which is 30. Remember, we multiply the coefficients, and we add the exponents. So we have an a to the 3rd and an a to the ninth. 3 plus 9 makes 12. And I still have to divide by negative 12, a to the 14th power. So remember, we're literally going to do 30 divided by negative 12 in our calculator, and then we'll hit math, enter, enter. You should get negative 5 over 2. Then we have a to the 12th divided by a to the 14th. When we divide, we subtract those exponents. So 12 minus 14 is negative 2. So we're left with this. But we're not allowed to leave our answer with a negative exponent. So we're going to rewrite it, flipping that a and putting it down in the denominator so the exponent can become positive. All right, I want you to try um, number 25 now. It's very similar to that. So you're going to first use the product rule, multiply the top, okay? So use the product rule on the top and figure out what that is. Then, so that's called in the numerator. Then you're going to use the product rule in the denominator. So then you'll have to do the product rule again in the denominator and then your last step would be to actually divide and use the quotient rule and then of course make sure that your answer does not contain any negative numbers so go ahead and try number 25 now All right, we're going to do two more. I'm going to go up here and do number 23 with you. All right, so notice we have three things going on here. We have a power here. So I have to clean that part up first. So we're going to use the power rule first. Then I have to multiply whatever I get after when I do that. I have to multiply that with this. So my second step is going to be to actually multiply, and we call that the product rule. Then once we know what our top is, we'll end up dividing by this bottom. So our last step would be to use that quotient rule. All right, so first we have to use the product rule. So I have to distribute this two and square everything in here. So I have to do three squared, which remember is like three times three, which is nine. Then I have to do x to the first power squared. The power rule says we multiply our exponents. So one times two gives me an x squared. I'd have y to the first power and square that. So one times two is two. So that's me using the power rule. So step one is done. 
you really have to write all these out. You can't be lazy about writing all your work out on these. It's kind of hard to do if you don't. Our next step was to use the product rule. So we're going to multiply these two together. All right, so when we do that, 9 times 2 makes 18. I add my exponents. So I have an x squared and an x to the fourth, which makes x to the sixth. I have a y squared and a y cubed. 2 plus 3 makes 5. On the bottom here, it's still 6x to the 8th y. So I just did the product rule. The last rule would be to divide and use the quotient rule. So I'm going to do 18 divided by 6, which makes 3. I have an x to the 6th divided by x to the 8th. 6 minus 8 is negative 2. Then I have a y to the 5th divided by y. And remember, that's like an invisible 1 there. So we subtract, and 5 minus 1 makes 4. So this is my answer. I just have to clean it up. That negative exponent has to drop down into a denominator so that it can become positive. All right, go ahead and try number 24 on your own. So your first step is going to have to be to take care of this power to a power. So your first step is going to be the power rule in the numerator. So very similar to what I just did. Power rule in the numerator. Then you're going to do the power rule in the denominator. And then lastly, we do have to divide. So our last step will be to use the quotient rule. All right, go ahead and try 24 now. All right, and that concludes your video over our last exponent rule that we're going to talk about. So just keep in mind, anytime you do any of the rules, whether it be the power rule, the product rule, um, or the quotient rule, your final answer cannot contain a negative. So I'll always just flip it down to the denominator. It stays the same number. It just becomes positive. If you have any questions, let us know.